Do you wish you had a rule book for lifting that you could follow the advice of all those people that came before you? Well, we're looking at an article that explores exactly that on Quora. So we've got a post here on Quora from Yahia Ali, who's been on the channel before. And it's called Workout Cheat Codes I Know at 43 That I Wish I Knew at 23. And we've got this wild picture here. I assume it's AI and it's of a hench bear with some massive man forearms and he's bulging out of his shirt. <laughs> and I'm guessing that implies these cheat codes will turn you into the ultimate bear. So number one, count backwards from your desired rep target. This tricks your mind into finishing the reps. Yeah, I could get behind that because sometimes say you are doing 10 reps of a heavy weight, and you're counting from one, two, you might get to eight and it's very hard and you might think, oh, I'm not gonna do it, I'm gonna do nine. I'm just gonna rack it because it's burning too much. But if you count down, you're like, you get down to 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then you're, oh, yeah, I can see that. Your mind's like, we've got to finish this rep one more. So a little bit of a mental trick there. Number two, creatine is the most researched supplement with literally zero side effects. Take five grams daily to build muscle and improve brain health. I can't really attest to brain health. I've not heard anyone say that before. Um, I, I honestly have never taken creatine because I'm quite stubborn when it comes to taking new things. So I can't attest to it helping you build muscle either. But I have heard a lot of people use it. It's quite ubiquitous. Even people who don't go to the gym, they get a bag of creatine before they even go. They might even give up on the gym and take creatine for some reason. So I'm inclined to say, just from the experiences of those around us, that it has little side effects. I'm not gonna say zero because it does have some side effects. Like you hold more intramuscular water. That is a side effect. Eat at least eight to one grams of protein per pound of body weight to build and maintain muscle. I'm guessing he means 0.8, because that's kind of confusing, between eight to one gram. But um, yeah, we could probably all do with increased our protein intake. Number four, do some pilometrics before a lower body workout and medicine ball throws before an upper body workout. This trains your nervous system to use power when lifting. I actually do my pyelometrics after because I find, say if I do deadlift or squat, I find that it, that that helps build my nervous system to generate more power. Then I go do the jumping and I can jump higher. I actually think of it the other way around. But I would like to add something in here. When I do pyelometrics like running around, jumping, I actually find my my joints and everything, they uh, I call it, they feel lubed up. So <laughs> I think it's a good idea, but I like to do it afterwards because I think it can be quite tiring and I'd like to get my, um, my deadlifts done first. Number five, do your weakest muscles in the beginning of your workout. Start with your weakest side first when doing single joint movements. I mean, that just make, makes good sense there. Yep, if you want to um, say your chest is lagging, I'm just picking that because my chest is lagging. We do chest first. If you're doing the weaker side, say I'm doing calves, can generally get more reps, I think out my left side. So I start with my right side, then I do my left calf, you know, one leg at a time. And then you can match the reps to the weaker side. So I'm onto that one. Number six, if you want to build muscle, you must aim to get a bit better. This is called progressive overload. I mean, so many people talk about this already on the internet. So if you haven't heard of it, just search it on YouTube. There's going to be hundreds of people going on about progressive overload. Number seven, think about the muscles you're exercising using your mind to contract them. This is called the mind to muscle connection. I think that helps to an extent, but I, do you know what I think works better? Just doing the exercise over time, you get a better feel for it. You get more efficient at doing it. So I would just say just do the exercise more often and you'll get better at doing it. Number eight, if you want to build muscle, increase energy and recover faster, focus on your sleep. The better you sleep habits, the better you become. Well, he missed your, the better your sleep habits. But yes, just get better sleep. I mean, it doesn't just help the gym, it helps everything. Number nine, when lifting, keep your head and eyes fixed on a point where you'll be able to focus and contract the muscle the most. This is a bit confusing. I mean, that's sort of like a balance thing and you naturally do fix onto one point. Uh, have you ever tried to stand on one leg and close your eyes? You get a bit wobbly. But if you stand on one leg and stare at something, it's generally easier to do. I'm not quite sure how it lets you contract the muscle the most. Number 10, allow yourself to take an exercise to failure 10% of the time. The rest of the time, leave one to two reps in the tank to maintain form and save the joints. Yeah, I think that most, I would say that's mostly for big lifts, like doing a doing a squat or 
bench or deadlift and work with little exercises, you're probably safe to do that more often to failure. I'd, I'd just listen to your body if it starts to hurt in a bad way, like in the joint, probably a good idea to stop that for a little bit and recover. Number 11, to build muscle, focus on lowering a weight under control in four seconds and lift it in two time under tension grows muscle. Sorry, the way it's written is kind of confusing, but he's basically saying focus on bringing it down. So I'll just keep defaulting to bench press. I think that's called the eccentric phase. Yep, so you focus on bringing it down and then explode up the concentric phase. Bringing it down. And the, I do find, say you have got, like we were saying before, your joints are starting to hurt. You can just lower the weight and bring it down even slower. And then it saves the uh, pressure on your joints. But going down even slowly, 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 like that will burn. Just try it out and then it might save yourself a bit of pain. And you get a bare pump, I think. Number 12, if you're limited on time, use metabolic circuits. They put two to five exercises together without rest and you can get a great workout in half an hour or less. I call that superset. So say I want to get a workout done in half an hour, you might want to do a bit of back. So you do some lat pull downs and then you go over straight away, do some curls, then get on the other machine, do some, um, overhead press or whatever machines are near you, then go back to the lat pull downs and do that, I don't know, five sets, five circuits. Uh, it does work pretty well. Number 14, do box breathing for three to five minutes after a workout to get your body into a parasympathetic state so you can speed up recovery. Don't know what box breathing is. I do know a little bit about the parasympathetic nervous system. So that's sort of your rest and digest. And the sympathetic nervous system is when you're like, ready to go and do something, fight or whatever it is. You can do this sort of breathing. You fill up your lungs and then fill it up a little bit more. And then we just chill like this. Hold it for a while. And I already feel chill just from one breath. And then I haven't even taken a breath in yet. You can slow your breathing down dramatically just by doing that. There's my first breath. <laughs> yeah, give that a go. Number 15, base your goals around behaviors. You can't control outcomes, but you can control behavior. Focus on what you control. The way I think of it is you can control the inputs and they will end up affecting the output. What you can control is the things that you do. And I've actually been using that in terms of YouTube. So I can't control if people watch the video. I can't control getting views. But what I can control is making videos and doing certain things like slowly change this set to have these lights. I've got a light here. Those are things that I've changed over time. Change your inputs to change your output. It is very hard to not focus on the output though. I do struggle with that. Like I stare at the analytics in the gym. You notice your lifts change on a daily basis depending on how tired or how well rested you are. So yeah, but you can control going in there, maybe doing some sets, you know, maybe you can do one extra set this week. I don't know. You can change your input. So I do think that's a valid point. Number 16, you'll get better results getting stronger using the same program for 12 weeks than constantly trying to change it every time you step in the gym. If I go in and do bench for 12 weeks, I'm going to get stronger at bench because I'm getting more practice at bench. But if I go in and I do bench, dumbbell bench, whatever, some other chest machine. I keep changing it every week. I think you would make some gains as if you push it, but you're not going to get stronger at bench if that's your goal. Number 17, if you sit at a desk, do more face pulls. They condition the rear delts, rhomboids and external rotators to reverse the effects of sitting. This is something I get behind quite a lot, but I, I'd like to train my rear delts and just back in general, because um, I do a lot of, well, I have done a lot of sitting at the desk, not just for work, but for games as well, because I've got my PC for gaming. So I like to, of what I've been doing lately is I go to a cable machine, it's here, pull it out like that. I saw it, I think I saw it in a Jeff Nippard video and you go down slowly and then that'll train your rear delts or you can do the rear delt fly. You, you can generally get, if you see this machine where you can do chest flies, you could just sit on it backwards and pull it apart. It does work great, but I definitely get behind this, but I don't like face pulls. I just don't like them, but I like to train rear delts. So just do what works for you. Number 18, leave your ego at the door. Don't look at how others are lifting, focus on your own journey and enjoy the process. This is definitely something that, you know, it, it is hard to do sometimes, but 
you definitely want to follow this advice because say you go in there, for me, in terms of ego, it's like, like I used to deadlift a lot heavier and a prime example yesterday, I go in and I've got a little bit of knee pain. So I give up, I'm like, I'm not doing back squat today, but I'm annoyed about it because I like, I want to continue progressing it, but okay, let's change exercise. So I did deadlift and then I start deadlifting and it feels dreadful because I'm just a bit underrested. And then in my head, I'm like, I want to load up 180 kilos, like four plates on each side, and I want to deadlift it. But my body's telling me I'm all 140 and I'm seeing some stars. And my body's like, you're not rested enough for this. And I get a bit annoyed at myself. And then I'm annoyed at myself, not just because I can't lift the weight, but also because I even did it in the first place. Because my body is sending me these signals saying, you're not rested enough for this today. Do something small, like do some machine isolation work. And I sort of... I let my ego get wrapped up in like, let's do some deadlifts. And I should have listened to my body doing the squat. It's not a good day for it. You're not going to lift heavy today. Your joints are beaten up. So I think the ego is not just about what other people are doing. If I mean, you can get wrapped up in that. But for me personally, it's all about what I used to be doing. Like I want to be performing at that level all the time, which is just not feasible unless you get some gear or something. But I've got no experience with that. Just naturally... It's a wave, you know, today you're strong, tomorrow you're weak because you're knackered. And you want to be like that strong every day. And that's where your ego gets wrapped up in that weight. So then, yeah, I do try my best to put that to one side and say, you know, let's do some isolation exercises. We don't need to go heavy, but it is tough. It is tough. So just try your best. So number 19 just says it again, leave your ego at the door. Don't know if that was a mistake or he thinks it's really important, but I do think it is important. Number 20, machines are not for sissies. They allow you to do an exercise in a safe way while focusing on the muscles you're targeting. Use them. I mean, I've never heard anyone say that they're for sissies before, but machines are great. You don't have to do anything with a barbell or dumbbells. You can just use machines for everything if you want. Great way to start getting into the gym as well, because it's not that intimidating. You just sit on the machine. Again, I'm doing chest. <laughs> I mean, you can do that to get used to just being in the gym. I mean, you could do bench later if you want, but they're great. They're, I think they're a great alternative. If bench is feeling bad, but I want to do some chest press, I'll sit in the chest press machine. Number 21, getting a spotter will add about 10% more strength to your workouts. Want to get the most out of an exercise, get someone to spot you. I'm just going to say that's bollocks, but <laughs> I mean, what he's really saying is if you want to push yourself, having the spotter there might give you the confidence to actually undergo that heavy lift you wanted to do. It's not gonna give you 10% more strength, it's just giving you confidence. So Matt says, good stuff, especially adding breath work to get into the recovery state faster, thereby repairing a building muscle sooner. Only things I would add is don't forget your micros, not just your macros. Also learn ideal range of motion. Then find your range of motion and find exercise to increase it. I hurt my shoulders and have pulled muscle from going for ideal range of motion and ignoring my personal range of motion. Where this comes for me is my squat, I've got a large range of motion. As I get the weight higher, you know, I can bottom out. So what I mean is go full depth. But I have found that that isn't great for my knee, really. So what I've been doing is actually cutting my range of motion. So my legs hit completely parallel and leaving it there and going for the full depth squat on, say, a belt squat machine. So it's not just about increasing your range of motion. If you've got hyper flexibility, hyper mobility, it's about cutting your range of motion and learning to, you know, for your body to say, right, let's stop here. Because that extra range of motion, it could be good at lower weights, but higher weights, I think it might be a bit damaging. It might just be, you know, might just, you know, learn something here. Heavy weight isn't really that necessary <laughs> in the long run. Sid says instant bookmark. So this stuff, you know, it is useful to people. And Min says 24. Remember to add some high intensity cardio into your program, especially if you mostly do resistance. Cardio health is super important. Yes. I definitely agree with this. I, I There's something I lack on. I do need to do more cardio. And he's added 25. It's grip strength, not forearm size that really matters. So hang more, farmer carry more. I need to do farmer carries. That is something I definitely need to be doing. 26, humans are generally pretty weak at the posterior chain. So that's everything on your back. So like your rear delts, rotator cuff, lower back, hamstrings, you know, all that stuff on the back. We're generally more anterior dominant so that's everything on the front like your quads and everything 27 when it comes to food follow these simple rules 
whole food, simply cooked, colourful, less sugar, oil and salt. Yeah, that's sort of, um, I feel like we all have an idea of what we should be eating. So Kirko says, I get high blood pressure from creatine. I mean, yeah, so some people do get side effects. Don't just listen to him saying that there are no side effects. There are. If you want to try it, then try it. I personally don't want to bother trying it because I haven't seen the need for it. <laughs> and El Duke says, don't listen to this advice. <laughs> Overall, I would say that a lot of this advice is very good, but... Um, a lot of people have already said most of these things on YouTube. So if you're into like the fitness space, you've heard all of these things before. But if you're new to it, this is a fantastic article to keep in mind if you're just getting started in the gym. If you enjoyed this video, I'm going to put two videos up here. One might be of interest. I'd love for you to have a little gander at one of those videos and I'll see you over there. Over there. Yeah, so if, if you're still here, you haven't clicked away, please press that subscribe button. Very much appreciate it. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. I've said in my previous videos that I will be chopping this beard off once I get to 1,000 subscribers. And <laughs> my subscriber count has slowed down dramatically and I'm really waiting for it to hit there because my beard's getting quite out of control now. It looks okay from the side, but it would be nice to um, get a clean shave. Although I've got quite a weak chin, so <laughs> kind of covers that at the minute. But yes, thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.